Bev at Planet Crochet. This morning I'm going to show you how to load your spool using my MIDI sewing machine I got from Aldi's a while ago. But first of all I'd like to show you my sewing box. This is where I keep all my sewing bits and bobs. In the top I keep my gutterman. I do like their threads as I've said before. And then I try and keep my needles to hand. And uh, the pin should be on that side. Of the and it's a concertina one. It was my nan's, this this was. So it doesn't sit on here. It normally sits somewhere else. But I thought today I'd put it in the video. Um, you can still buy these. This was my nan's. And I used to play with it as a little girl. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was one of the only things I was allowed to play with. Inside was buttons, bits and bobs. And being the only girl in the house, that was the thing, apart from playing outside in the garden. But when I was in, this was it. So when uh, Nan passed, Grandad asked, is there anything you would like? And this was the only thing I wanted. And apart from the odd screw, as you can see, it's still as it was in my nan's house. Um, my children were banned from touching. They were not allowed to play with it. Because only, I mean, I would now, but it's different when they're little. I don't want them busting it. It was, uh, it's very precious to me. And I don't do much sewing. I found crochet in my uh, love and, but I can do basic sewing. I bought this a while ago. As you'll see, I'll put a link below about some previous videos. I've already got a loaded spool um, in here ready for when I need to use it. So I'm going to show you how to load the spool and then just rethread the machine and then you're off to go. That's So if, that's it, if you've got a MIDI machine, it's basically most machines are exactly the same. They're just obviously bigger. This is quite small. Um, that's my hand, so it is quite small, but it does basic. As I said in my um, how to use when I first used it, it is it's great for just doing basic machines. And I got this from Aldi's. Um, this video isn't sponsored in any way. So let's get to loading your spool. Right, so to load your spool, you'll need your bobbin at the back. Make sure you have enough thread on as well. I mean, this I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but this, if I were using this for a project, this would not have enough thread on. I would have to use a fresh one. So make sure you've got enough thread as well of the same colour. You need to thread underneath this little notch. It's as hard with one hand. I've done it. So it goes underneath, and that is to thread the spool as well as loading machine and now I've just gone and pulled it out. <coughs> there. Go underneath. And can you see this little diagram? So for your spool you're going right and to thread your machine you're going down. So obviously we need to go right. Take your spool Pop it on out there, and there's a little. Can you see it? It's like a spring catch and um, stops it coming off. And then what you have to do is. Take your thread end and poke it through one of the holes at the top. Make sure your thread's not caught on anything. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's how you start to thread your spool. Years ago, when I had the other machine, 
you could disengage this so when you turned it on to wind this spool to fill it up it stopped the needle going up and down but this doesn't do it so make sure your foot is up because like i said the old the old and bigger machine i had would disengage all that so it wouldn't be moving because you don't want the foot down and it's grinding on those teeth at the bottom so hold this up you won't hold this for long but you just want to hold this so when it starts to thread on um it's caught because otherwise it becomes loose now i have to go and get some scissors because i'll tell you why oops <clears throat> I found myself, but I'll show you why in a minute. Let me just sit down. <clears throat> now, if you look back on my older video, this machine, you can use the foot pedal or the switch. So I'm going to do the switch on low. And um, you'll see why I need the scissors. Or you need something to do it. What I'm going to do. So just for a little while, hold it taut. Right, and see if that's enough. I'll do it a bit longer. I'll just snip it because it's. Um, in fact, no, I'm not going to snip it. Now you see how. Let's move the camera a bit closer. You see how it's only loaded at the bottom. Now if I didn't. What I'm going to do with the scissors, do what I do, it will just load it at the bottom. I don't know if it's a fault, I, I don't know why it does it, but just for this to load your spool, it, it, it's no big deal to do what I'm going to do. So, but, but when I had the other bigger machine, it didn't do this. It, it actually filled it and it went up and down, up and down. Why this doesn't do it, I've no idea. It, it works what I do. Now, the reason I've just not let go of this tail, I've just seen when I did let go, can you see, it's not caught it because it's not gone to the top. So when I switch this on again and it goes to the top and then it goes down, I'll eventually, I'll stop the machine again and cut this bit off. But for now, I'm not going to do that. So I'll use the switch again. that I can cut that off because you can't leave a long tail in the machine sticking out like that so you can forget about that now it is a little bit fiddly you can use the foot if you want it more controlled but I use the switch so I'm going to now switch to the foot and then I can control it <clears throat> so this is why you need something thin as well I tried using a pencil it was too thick to get under here so a pair of scissors is fine and you have to keep taking that up and down and let it fill up you'll see because otherwise you see all it will do I'm not going to do it a lot because I don't want a big bulk at the bottom. It will, all it will do is just fill up the bottom and then you've got a massive bulk here and you can see it. So you want it evenly going up and down, up and down. So you just gently with the scissors or something else you have, just push the thread up and down the spool. And try and be as even as you can at the bottom, middle and top. This is as fast as it goes. It doesn't go anything else. The foot is flat to the floor. It's a little noisier than some of the machines. And as you can 
see you, you sat watching, you can eyeball whether it's thinner on the top and thicker at the bottom or in the middle. So just let it drop. You see, if I left it, it would just stay at the bottom and fill at the bottom. So I need to fill the top in a little bit more. That looks good to me. And I've never excessively filled these spools, so I don't know if this would automatically start. I don't think it would, and I'm not going to do it. But anyway, you don't want it to go and seal from the outside of it. And that's how you load your spool. So you pull it back. Now I'm going to disconnect the electricity because I'm going to be filling in a minute and I'd rather use a handle. Pull it off. So it's, it's good as that little clip. Spring. So you can leave your spool, uh, spool bobbin on because you need that. Cause it's, you've already threaded it through there and you want it to come down the machine. So give yourself a bit of a little tail, pop it on the bottom and then thread the machine. As normal. And that does down and you can't mistake one there's a booklet you can follow but also these arrows number one is where my finger is number two is here and it actually arrows where to go put your thread through the hole give yourself a bit of a, a tail you go down the three showing you four and then as i said in the previous video this is a little bit fiddly Put your foot down, give yourself some room, push it through the hole. Oops, see, doesn't always go to plan. Go down, thread it through. Now you need to lift your foot, lift the needle as high as you can. Pop the foot back down. Um, thread it through the needle. A little bit fiddly again. Lift your foot, put it through the back, leave that, your spool, again, I made a mistake when I first used it, you want the spool in your left hand, the thread in your right, pop it down into the machine, drop your thread, hold the bobbin thread at the back, and use the handle on the machine, no electricity, just gently, slowly take it and you'll see it comes across, the top thread comes across to pick up the bobbin, uh, the spool thread. And then use something to gently pull it through the back. And you'll see it come through, if it does, yes it does, there you go. And then you just pull it through. And there you have it, you've loaded your machine. So you've loaded your spool and then put your guard on. So yeah, that's how that's done. So it's pretty easy. The only thing I don't like, or should I say, is a fiddle, a pain, is the um, having to use something slim. Like I say, if you, if you use a pencil, as I did try first, it's, it's too bulky, you know, to, to get that in there. So you want a pair of scissors or something thinner, a ruler maybe, or I do keep this hat to hand for just doing things. It's um barbecue stick, you know, for barbecue um, kebabs. I use one of those. I just keep it in my pens just to use for bits and bobs around the crochet and sewing machine um, area. And that's And it's perfect for doing that. You just need to... Up and down, up and down. So I did find the switch a little bit more fiddly, as in I was having to focus on here, but then I had to turn it off. So yes, my bad, use the foot. Don't use the switch when you're loading, because it's, it's a, with your hands, it's a little bit fiddly. So yeah, that's it. I hope you found that very helpful. Um, you take it for granted when you load a machine, you know, that people will just read the instructions and you should read the instructions by the way but if you've had a sewing machine most things on a machine is self-explanatory it's just getting used to a new machine anyway you know from me today 
from Bev at Planet Crochet. I hope you're having a lovely day. We are here in Yorkshire. Bye for now.